inside of mine Things look so bad everywhere In this whole world, what is fair? We walk the line and try to see Falling behind and what could be Whoa, whoa. about the way I was did the heartbreak change me baby but looking where I ended up
I'm going to ask everyone to rise for the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the land of the Well, 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 wow, was that fabulous? Are we, we're not, we gotta turn the lights on, I can't do this. Turn that light off. Hello? All right, well, thank you. Elena, for that beautiful rendition, and Mr. Smith, are you still in here? Tim Smith, keynote director at Old Tangy High School. I, uh, I can't imagine how you put that all together, man. It's just amazing, and you know, Rob Griffiths, I know you're sitting around, you're here somewhere, but I just can't imagine the pride you feel in seeing your kids up here on stage performing for us, so um, I also want to make sure we... Uh, Shout out to Jill Bixler for um, the beautiful music in the commons. I loved hearing the Forrest Gump theme. It just saw the floating uh, feather and it just lifts, lifts my spirit. So that was just a perfect way to kick off our time together. So thank you everyone for being here. Thank you to those of you who are in the uh, additional seating in the gymnasium and all of you back in your buildings, uh, hopefully watching our convocation ceremony. So I would like to be the first to officially welcome you all back for what I know is going to be another great school year in Ol here in Olentangy. So welcome back. I, I, I'm just so glad to be standing here in front of you uh, rather than doing this virtually like we did last year. I know that things are not, not quite back to normal yet. Uh, but we're getting there every day. Each and every day, I think things are going to continue to get better. I hope that you were all able to enjoy time uh, with your family and friends this summer. I know last summer was a lot, uh, lot more stressful for many of us, so my hope is that uh, summer did allow you the opportunity to kick back and relax and really take a well-deserved break. But, you know, as, as we know, we're going to get right back into it real fast here, starting tomorrow. So... As uh, superintendent, it is my privilege to work with a fantastic Board of Education to ensure our district continues to provide great educational experiences for all our students. So today, I'd like to introduce the Board of Education members in, in attendance, Dr. Lakeisha Wise, <laughs> Mrs. Mindy Patrick, our Board of Education Vice President, Mr. Dave King, and our Board of Education President, Mrs. Julie Wagner Fiesel. You know, we really couldn't do it without these people, and we are very, very fortunate to have a strong relationship with our board, and um, we appreciate their tireless efforts to help us achieve our mission. 
And um, I'm sure most of you are aware that uh, both Mr. King and Mrs. Fiesel's terms in office expire this fall, and neither are seeking another term in office. And together, Dave and Julie have combined 26 years of service to our district. They have seen seven levies passed, 11 buildings built and opened. There is simply, uh, quite simply, not enough, I could say, to express our collective gratitude and my personal appreciation for their selfless dedication to the Old Tangy Schools. They both leave big shoes to fill. Everybody. Thank you for, <clears throat> for that team. Another gr in the group of individuals that I have the pleasure of working very closely with, and this is always the, really one of the best days of the year for me because I get to come back and spend time with all of you. Because quite honestly, you can only so spend so much time with the people I'm going to introduce <laughs> next. But our district leadership team, who I am just so lucky to have uh, the privilege to work with, our treasurer, Mrs. Emily Hatfield, <laughs> Chief of Administrative Services, Mr. Randy Wright, our Chief Operation, Operations Officer, Mr. Todd Meyer, and our Chief Academic Officer, Dr. Jack Betty. Uh, and our Chief Communications Officer, Mrs. Krista Davis, who unfortunately was not able to be with, her, with us today, but I know she is closely watching, monitoring every word I say. Uh, it's also an honor to work closely with each of our four association leaders, so I'm pleased to introduce them to you today. Olentangy Teachers Association President, Ms. Elaine Eddy. Our OPSI Local 39 President, Mr. Rob Comstock. He's at Wyandotte Run Elementary. Our OPSI Local 322 President, Mr. Kevin Vangeloff. And OPSI Local 222 President, Mrs. Sue Capretta. So thank you, thank you all of you for that. We've got a great partnership with all of our associations and we, look, we really enjoy working collaboratively with them. So, more than ever, I think we've all been collectively looking forward to this August of 2021, a little more than the start of school's years in the past. Um, and there's no secret why. The last school year was tough. Moreover, the last 18 months have been tough. Despite the continuation of this pandemic, we're working on slowly returning to our normal world. And August is our opportunity in the world of education for a fresh start, a time to reflect, a time to anticipate and consider our priorities. This year, I'm proud to share that we're gonna spend some time hearing from our own one Olentangy family. Olentangy Schools is not only one of the best school districts in Ohio, but it is one of the best school districts in the nation. Who better to hear from than members of our own community teachers, parents, students, and administrators, who in a few minutes will share their personal stories of transformation during the pandemic and beyond, and their insights about those experiences. Join me in welcoming our first two guest speakers, Mrs. Erin Bush, German and journalism teacher at Olentangy Berlin High School, and Ms. Jen Fury, our assistant director of instructional technology, who led our CDL program last year. Good morning. Good morning. For the past three years, I've been a very proud Berlin Bear. And prior to that, I was at Shanahan Middle School for 15 awesome years. I feel so blessed to be a part of this community and to be standing here today. But first, I have to say thank you to Mr. Wraith, Mr. Spinner, and the other building administrators, um, everyone who has dealt with the last year and a half. We can't even fathom what you've been through. And I hope you know how much your efforts are appreciated.
My story is most likely the same as yours. It was a hard but remarkable year. We felt disconnected and struggled to find a sense of control. If you're like me, you were unsure of how to navigate a different way of teaching and reach our students with little time to pivot, all while living through a pandemic that brought a loss of human contact, the paralysis of social activities, the illness and loss of loved ones, and fear. Throw in the most divisive political climate in decades, and it's a wonder we're all still smiling. It wasn't one breakthrough event that stands out, but a few very powerful small moments that altered the course of the year and my outlook on how to embrace this new normal. Ultimately, it became clear that our students will show us the way. I feel like we would be remiss to not acknowledge that these are difficult times. For both students and staff, it's hard to always stay positive. I learned last year that the best way to stay positive is to acknowledge the struggle and be honest about it with ourselves and our students. I know it wasn't my actions or insight or planning that helped my students persevere last year. In fact, it was quite the opposite, as they taught me. I approached the year with excitement to be back in person, but also trepidation about the actual process of teaching hybrid and how in the world to create a yearbook to capture this unprecedented year. How do you document a year of events that have been canceled, clubs that aren't meeting, and show the emotions and friends of classmates when you can't even see their faces? There was also the question how to physically complete a book when students were only school part-time and the staff was never together all at once. One afternoon last fall, it was my sweet editor Kayla that spoke up. Guys, we got this. It's going to be a good year. We are not going to make a sad book. We got this. It was that simple. Everybody was on board. They bought in. Kayla set the tone and everyone fell into place, willing to do whatever it took. We ended up using an online program that allowed students to work from anywhere, and even though it meant that students had to learn a whole new system, they were excited to do it. At a time when I would have been overwhelmed, my students embraced the challenge with a positive attitude. I realized right then that my job was not to create the path for them, but to let them steer the ship as they forged ahead on their own accord. They were totally capable and more than willing. They showed me the way. As you can probably imagine, discussing current events in class proved to be a little challenging last year, as high school kids tend to have some strong opinions. In an effort to avoid controversial political rhetoric, I would sometimes share quotes from the media for students to think about as an alternative to sharing the day's news. This one from New York Times writer Barry Weiss set a precedent and created one more pivotal moment. She said, we live in a time when almost everything is posted, recorded, and shared. That's the reality. I agree it's terrible, but we can't unplug the internet. Living in this world is going to require a deep and generous ethic of forgiveness. That isn't possible without insisting that intent matters. Wow, did that spark a conversation. The students were intrigued, and the conversations that ensued were unbelievable. I scrapped my plans and shared the quote with every class that day, even in German. Intent matters. This resounded with them more than I could have imagined. It reinforced to me that our students' world is full of glimpses and snapshots of one another during a very socially isolated time. Students openly discuss the judgment and pressure they feel on a daily basis. They feel like they're on a constant stage, and heaven forbid they say the wrong thing or post the wrong image in a moment of haste because having the opportunity to explain or apologize usually isn't an option. The interesting thing is that intent became a word my students used in their normal rhetoric not just for catching quotes or writing an article, but in stories of things they saw and within their own relationships. In this world of negativity and chaos, simply giving others the opportunity and grace to explain, explore, and discuss a post, an email, a comment, was more gratifying than I can explain. Intent matters. Again, what a simple but powerful lesson these amazing young women and men taught me. If you're worried about where your students will be academically when they enter your class, join the club. Your mind is probably already spinning with pre-assessment ideas and surveys and just how in the world you're going to meet them where they are and differentiate for one million social, emotional, mental, and academic needs. The students will show us. Just like they did last year, they will show us. My advice for whatever it's worth is to be real and honest about the challenges we're facing. Our students are resilient and incredibly aware, and you have all taught them to be excellent problem solvers. There's no doubt in my mind that once again, they will let us know where they are and how we can best be there for them. I spent this past weekend at OU celebrating the life of my college journal journalism advisor, probably the best teacher I've ever had. 
No one talked about the units from his syllabus. Rather, the conversations po focused on his impact on us as people. He taught us the power of being present and genuine and putting relationships ahead of anything else. Whether students are in your classroom, on your bus, coming through your halls, or in your lunch line, I encourage you to take the time to notice all of the small moments this year. They just might have the biggest impact. I hope you all have a great year. Good morning. As Mr. Rafe shared, my role last year was the lead administrator for the Committed Distance Learning Program. My story begins on July 30th. On July 30th, 2020, NASA launched the Mars rover Perseverance. The design for Perseverance evolved from the Mars rover Curiosity. The two rovers share a lot of similarities, including a similar body plan. However, Perseverance had some new elements, most notably a toolbox. This toolbox, among other updates, enabled Perseverance to work more efficiently, gave more opportunities for exploring and understanding Mars. Perseverance has a greater level of independence than Curiosity ever did. The design allows for future growth. While I've never worked for NASA, I am inclined to believe that to design Curiosity and Perseverance, as well as other rovers, it took a team, a team that came together with one purpose, one intent, a team that supported each other's curiosities, sorry, a team that came together with one purpose and one intent, a shared vision and mindset. I apologize, my heel got stuck. <laughs> I'm going to back up for a second. <laughs> well, I've never worked for NASA, I am inclined to believe that to design curiosity and perseverance, it, as well as other rovers, it took a team, a team that came together with one purpose, one intent, a shared vision and mindset, a team that went through multiple levels of discomfort, but was willing to and continues to grow and learn together, a team that supported each other's curiosities, knowing that curiosity and perseverance often lead to new and better opportunities. Also, on July 30th, 2020, less than nine hours after Perseverance launch, Curiosity drove my decision to enter into what would become a year of discomfort like none I'd ever experienced before. Discomfort I'd ultimately persevere through. On July 30th, 2020, if you'd compared levels of discomfort between NASA and me, I'm pretty sure I'd have won. Let's be honest, if NASA wasn't successful with their Perseverance mission, how many in this room would have known or been bothered by it? But if Olin Tangi wasn't successful with their CDL program, everyone would have heard about it. While I can't speak to the specifics of NASA, I can speak to a few of the specifics that made CDL successful. We had a team. We had close to 300 educators with different expertise and insights that came together from across the district. Even with the discomfort that so many experienced, this team showed up. Every day, this team showed up. This team had one purpose, one intent. And that was to do what we'd always done before, to facilitate maximum learning for every CDL student. It just looked a bit different this year. This team had a shared vision and mindset. This team also had fun. We had so much fun. This team laughed together and we cried together. We even danced together. This team supported each other's curiosities, created together, and shared innovative ways of teaching our students. This team's constant curiosity and perseverance 
created opportunities for our students to flourish in ways we never could have imagined. In order for Perseverance to be successful, NASA couldn't just replicate curiosity. More than likely, they would have gotten the same level of understanding as before. The team took the pieces and the parts of curiosity that worked, and then they brought in the new and better elements, purposely reflecting on lessons learned to reach new horizons in the study of Mars. Last year wasn't only about CDL. Everyone in this room experienced discomfort on our journeys last year. Everyone in the district experienced discomfort on their journey last year. The hybrid learning model, transportation, food service, technology, we all faced a level of discomfort. I do believe that the funny thing about a journey is that no two individuals on the exact same journey ever really experience the exact same thing. It's all a matter of your unique perspective and reflection. Every individual in our organization, because of their journeys during the 2021 school year, we all have a new and better toolbox that we can work with. One that I do believe if we take our teams and purposefully reflect on lessons learned, what worked and what wasn't working, can lead to significant growth for each of us, ultimately leading to better learning opportunities for our students. But just as with NASA, we can't do this alone. We need each other. We need our teams. This year, we have the opportunity to take our teams on a new journey. We need to lead our teams in not just sharing their stories, but their optimism, their curiosity, and their ingenuity. We also need to understand that our students have been on a journey. They have a story, too. We need to embrace their wisdom, their spirit, and their know-how. And we cannot shy from the discomfort that we know will come from this level of reflection, because it's through discomfort that we have the opportunity to become a better version of ourselves. So as we start this new school year, it's my hope that just like with curiosity and perseverance, we'll take the pieces and the parts that work but we'll also bring in the new and better elements, this new toolbox that so many of us now have, ultimately creating opportunities for our students to reach new horizons. Thank you, thank you, Aaron and Jen for sharing your insights. So, I agree. We got this. We got this. We will, uh, we will persevere. And um, again, it will be a little bit uncomfortable at times, but we got this. So I hope you're starting to sense the theme of all of this. Uh, even the songs that Mr. Smith picked for the keynotes to, to, to sing. Um, I, I hope everything for you fits all together. The lessons you've shared here about your uh, intent mattering and perseverance being key to everything we do are truly invaluable. Uh, okay, so one of the key reasons Olentangy Schools is so successful is because of our close partnership that our staff has with uh, parents in our community. And uh, next, I'm pleased to introduce Mrs. Jenny Vermul Vermulen who is a parent of a Tyler Run Elementary and Liberty Middle School student who will share her parent perspective and the deep impact that happens when you go the extra mile. Good morning. Well, I feel really lucky to be here in front of this very large audience. Um, to share a parent's perspective uh, as we all get ready to go back to school tomorrow. And when I think about everything in the world right now that's going on that creates so much extra, right? So much extra noise, extra stress, extra work. I wanna shift gears a little bit 
and remind you all that all the extra that you already do inside or outside of a pandemic does not go unnoticed and most certainly does not go unappreciated. And I think that's actually why I'm here because before the last day of school, last, the night before the last day of school last year, I sent a letter or an email, I'm sorry, to Mr. Rafe that I had been planning on sending in probably the middle of my son's kindergarten year. And it was to express my deep, deep gratitude for an amazing group of people who made a major difference in a little boy's life and in the life of his family. And with my son's permission, I'm going to share that email with you. Here we go. Dear Mr. Ray, I'm hoping you will find some joy in this email as I've waited five years to write it. You see, my son Owen, my husband Mark, my daughter Olivia and I are forever in debt to several special people that have impacted a little boy and his family in a very big way. Owen was diagnosed with ADHD halfway through kindergarten. As you can probably figure from your experience, a boy who is diagnosed with, kinder with ADHD in kindergarten is probably one who has the hyperactive and impulsive type diagnosis. And you would be right. <laughs> we always knew that there was something going on with him, but we really found out in kindergarten. And the struggle was real. So we did what so many people do. We tried the ADHD medication. And while I'm a big advocate of the support a child can receive from ADHD medication, Owen could not tolerate them. Every single one of them made him agitated or aggressive. I didn't even recognize my little boy suddenly, and very quickly we felt pretty alone and very scared. I can't quite put into words what that was like for us, but I do remember being in a constant state of panic and I don't really even know what that felt like for him. So we had several months like that before we chose to seek other ways to help him cope. And he eventually did come back to the hyperactive, impulsive little guy he was before, but that was so much better than a medicated version of a child that wasn't even himself. But now we turned our worry over to what we would do to get him through school. And not only were we worried about his education, we were worried about the impact he would have on others' ability to learn. He was very disruptive. <laughs> but I'm happy to report that he is doing so great now. I am cautiously optimistic about middle school, puberty, and all the other fun stuff ahead, but I now know that we can get through it. And I'm not sure if he'd be doing this great or if we'd be feeling this confident if it wasn't for the following people who Owen and his family will forever cherish. In fact, as we are coming to the last day of Tyler Run tomorrow, we are reminiscing about each of them. Katie Lukacs, the advocate. Katie went through the wildest part of the ride with us and was surely put through the ringer that year. But oh, did she team up with us to fight for him to be okay in every possible way. The gift that she gave Owen was that she taught us to advocate for him. Susie Stegner the one who taught Owen how to cope. So Susie was prepared for Owen from day one and taught him and us so many strategies to cope with his ADHD. He didn't perfect them <laughs> in first grade, but he definitely built a base. Learning to cope is the gift that Susie gave him that I believe he will always rely on. Mandy Robeck, the one who pushed him. Mandy took Owen under her wing and taught him how to push himself even when it was really, really hard and she didn't allow him or us to give up without trying harder and harder. And the gift from Mandy is that she taught Owen how to be proud of himself when he tried his best and how to take responsibility when he didn't. Probably something we're all still perfecting. <laughs> Heidi Gunn, the one who accepted him. As Owen got a little older, kids got a little less forgiving. He was improving, but he still crossed boundaries and was still a little disruptive. Heidi always accepted Owen for who he was. And the gift that she gave him is that the realization that you can do something that people don't like, but they can still like you. They don't have to be mutually exclusive. Laura Domini, the one who loved him. Laura did a lot to build Owen's self-esteem in fourth grade. She loved him, he knew it, and we knew it. The gift she gave him is the confidence to come to school and genuinely feel like he fit in. Shannon Price, the one who lifted him. This was a crazy year for everyone, and Shannon connected with Owen right away. 
They had a great year together, and he didn't complain about going to school one time. I've seen him grow so much this year, and the gift Shannon gave him is the proof that he can be happy in a classroom and the confidence that next year will be fine. Laura Frediani, the one who supported him and us. Okay, so when I was a kid and we played tag, we had this thing called ghoul. I don't know if anybody has ever heard of ghoul, but ghoul could be a car or a tree or a picnic table. And if you touched it, you couldn't be tagged, you were safe. And that's what I felt about Laura for us. She was our ghoul. <laughs> she not only helped Owen get caught up with reading through her intervention, but she literally helped us survive. And none of this is to say that each of these teachers doesn't do each of these things and so much more all the time. They just happen to stand out for doing them so well at a time that he needed it the most. And I would be remiss if I didn't also mention how grateful we are for the various aids that helped support him through his early years, giving him a chance to burn off some of his energy and helping him stay focused in the classroom. I'm really proud of Owen. He's worked really hard, but I know we could not be where we were if it were not for these wonderful, smart, kind, supportive, compassionate educators you and I are lucky enough to have in our district. So thank you from the bottom of our heart, sincerely, the Vermeulen. And I will just end this by saying that I believe that this audience is filled with Katie's and Susie's and Mandy's and Heidi's and Lara's and Shannon's and Laura's. So the one thing I say is please, please know that you make a difference. Every one of you. And tomorrow, all these students are gonna walk back into your classroom or your lunchroom or your office or onto your bus, or onto your field, or heaven help us, into your Zoom meeting. <laughs> and you impact them. And you impact their family more than you probably will ever know. So I hope you have a great year. Thank you for letting me be part of your special day. It's truly an honor. It's like the third time I've heard it, and I read it last June, and it still makes me cry. So thank you, Jenny, for being vulnerable and sharing your impact, uh, sharing the impact our staff has made on your family. Um, our staff has got to know that the big and little kindness efforts make a huge difference each and every day. They really do matter. They make a huge difference. So thank you for helping remind us all. And while this year has been hard, we have leaned on each other and we've learned from each other. We've practiced kindness and dug deep when we've thought that there wasn't any more to give. Things have been messy and hard and I know each of you can relate. And it really does help to hear from members of our family and as they share their perspective. So next we have uh, for us, please join me in welcoming Orange Middle School teacher, Mr. Brian Barkhurst. And followed by him will be Berlin High School student, Lacey Strauss. Good morning, friends. Welcome back. It's great to see everyone in person again. I hope you all had a wonderful summer. To all our new teachers and staff, welcome to the team. And to all our returning colleagues, including John Quinlan, Jessica Walker, and others, we're excited to have you back. My name is Brian Barkhurst, and I teach at Orange Middle School. This past year, I taught French through the Committed Distance Learning Program, or CDL. I've been asked to share with you a couple of my takeaways from the year, and I'd like to start off with a student story. At the end of the last year, my students completed a brief survey and wrote advice to my future students. Here's what one student wrote, quote, as the wise Ferris Bueller once said, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. The student then added, and this is my favorite part, quote, but definitely don't skip school like him. <laughs> that student got an A in my class, by the way. <laughs> so let's take my student's advice for a minute. Let's stop, take a moment to reflect, and share with the neighbor beside you the following. What's one thing you did this year 
that made you a better educator or a better professional? You and your partner have 30 seconds each to share. Go for it. You have 30 seconds. So what's your story? I'll share mine, but be ready to share your story if I bump into you later today. So at the beginning of this past school year, there were a lot of unknowns with our distance learning program. The general message that we got from Jennifer Fury and the CDL leaders was that it didn't need to be perfect to be something great. We were encouraged to focus on our students, focus on the essentials, and be creative and flexible with how we taught. Shout out to the CDL leadership team for all their hard work and support last year. To be candid, Planning and adjusting my lessons was really stressful at times, as I'm sure it was for many of you. But I'll share one idea with you that helped guide my teaching. There's a metaphor related to curriculum called windows and mirrors. I actually first learned about it from Amy Lewis and Katie Henry, who teach at Olentangy Meadows. And the idea originally comes from Dr. Rudine Sims Bishop, a professor at Ohio State. The comparison goes something like this. Like Windows, our curriculum can help, students, can help open students to new information, ideas, and skills. And like Mirrors, our curriculum can help students self-reflect and see themselves in the context of the larger world. In my own context, I used this analogy as a guide and began to notice to shift in my teaching as I did so. To create Windows, I found myself including places and in bios of new people I hadn't previously considered. I also found myself adjusting images and resources I used to more accurately reflect the broad backgrounds of the French-speaking world. To create mirrors, I found myself adding daily icebreakers or thinking routines to prompt student self-reflection, discussion, and interaction with the curriculum. Shout out to Greta Janagi and Shane Schof for promoting these initiatives at Orange Middle. I also found myself including more student surveys to both check on students and get feedback on my own teaching. For example, I had students complete an anonymous audit of my teaching resources. I wanted to make sure that students felt seen and included in the curriculum and determine where my gaps were. And students noticed. One student wrote, quote, you show many different groups of people and you ask us questions at the beginning of classes that can apply to everyone or help us to get to know other groups. While some of their feedback was humbling, it helped me make improvements and reminded me how valuable our students' feedback can be. Was it a perfect teaching year? No. I can tell you numerous stories of, about my dog, Johnny, barking while I was teaching, or how I accidentally hit the power button on my laptop during class on the first day of school. That did happen, by the way. <laughs> Regardless, I think my students would tell you that they felt appreciative for who they are and learned quite a bit of French during this last year. For me, the windows and mirrors metaphor served as a practical guide during a year with a lot of unknowns. In the process, it allowed me to re-examine my teaching practices and make improvements for my students. I hope it might guide your teaching as well. Before I wrap up, I have one last quote from a student. Quote, quarantine has affected my life a lot. Not being able to go outside, not being able to see friends, losing an interest in things I once loved. This year has been difficult. As we start this school year, let's remember that all our colleagues and students 
whether they were in person or in CDL last year, are coming to us with a mixed bag of emotions and experiences. Let's continue to support one another, share our big takeaways from last year, and remember this, that this school year doesn't need to be perfect to be something great. As Aaron Bush reminds us, we got this. Thank you and have a wonderful year. Well, hello, everyone. Falling down is an accident, but staying down is a choice. The pandemic impacted each and every one of our lives in so many ways. Relationships, physical health, mentality, the list goes on and on. There is no escaping what we all went through the previous year. And one thing's for sure, there's no going back to before the pandemic. A famous writer, Steve Miraboli once said, the truth is, unless you let go, unless you forgive yourself, unless you forgive the situation, unless you realize the situation is over, you cannot move forward. No one asked to go through as much as we all did. Every single person in this room fell in some sort of way. Now you must decide what to do next. And I say we rise up. As I look out into the crowd, I don't see teachers, principals, administrators. I see family in every face. What is it that even makes a family? Is it being related to someone? Is it waking up to your mother making breakfast? Well, students see family completely different than all of that. I saw family when on my first day at Owen Tangy Berlin High School, Principal Spinner tried to guess what I packed for lunch. And you know what? He weirdly guessed right. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a family when our school resource officer, Deputy Gaines, threw a ball in the hallway to different students to lighten their mood. I saw a family when I underestimated myself, and my chemistry teacher, Mr. Schrock, gave me confidence that I could achieve amazing things in my future. I saw a family when Ms. Bush saw potential in me and helped me to find my passion in journalism, as well as my guidance counselor, Ms. Smith, who persuaded me to take journalism when I had no intentions of doing so. Without them, I wouldn't be standing right here today. They unlocked a new interest I never knew I had within me. On behalf of all the students, I can assure you that those little things impact us. When you take the time to get to know us and be there for us, it has such an amazing effect. This is what makes us a family. I can go to school knowing that I am at a place where I will be welcomed and cared for. This is just one of the many things that makes the Owen Tangy School District so wonderful. You are not just SNAP staff members. Your words and your actions have power. What all you do will stay with us for the rest of our lives. You are our mentors, our friends, and our family. Your care and your love is what makes this school so special. I just moved here this previous year and I could feel the love everyone has for one another since day one. In fact, before I moved here, I had a friend who was already a student here. So I texted her and asked, what is this school like? Is there anything I should know before coming? And I'll never forget what she said to me. She said, Lacey, this school is completely different from anything you or I have ever seen before. Everyone is so extremely nice and kind to one another the students, the teachers, the principal, anyone you could possibly think of. They are so sweet, it's almost scary. <laughs> I laughed and couldn't believe what they were saying. And then I went to school, and everyone was unbelievably kind. I have never felt more welcome and more at home in my entire life. It was like you could feel the love in the air, which reminds me of something. Something I feel like truly resembles who we are. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, 
It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Because our district trusts and protects us, we have hope. Because our district loves us, we are a family. We persevere and we thrive. I came from two different high schools before attending the Olentangy School District. When I moved here, if I told you I wasn't scared or stressed, I would 100% be lying. <laughs> to make matters worse, I came in the middle of a global pandemic. I had no idea what to expect. My teachers and staff members helped me to feel like I wasn't at a new school. I was at my new home. They went above and beyond by making relationships and friendships I'll never forget. At my old school, I've never had friendships with my teachers. They never seemed to care about the students' lives or getting to know them. All they wanted to do was to do their job and then leave. They didn't care about getting to know us, what was going on in our lives. That wasn't really a bother or a concern to them. Since day one here, everyone was ready to get to know me, including my teachers, the principals, the custodians, the cafeteria workers, the bus drivers, even the office ladies were ready to get to know me and support me. Even while wearing a face mask and going to school in a hybrid, I have never been happier. I haven't received the opportunity to experience school events and all the activities due to the pandemic. But even so, I can see what makes this district so special. The pride that takes place in Olentangy is so powerful. The amount of spirit wear we wear all the time it pains me to say it, but at my first high school, I was embarrassed to buy spirit wear. No one wanted to wear a shirt with our school name on it, and no one did. Here, we wear it at least once a week. I can buy a school shirt with our name on it and be proud. I can wear a sweatshirt every day if I had to and be proud of it that I had the word Olin Tangy on my shirt. The Olentangy District is a place of hope and success, and I can never be more proud of it. I always wanted to come here, and now that I've been given the chance, it's better than I've ever imagined. I consider being part of the Olentangy School District a blessing because it improved my life to a better future. Even in the face of a global pandemic, we fought through and we fought hard, and I can assure you that there isn't anything that we can't conquer. We created a place of love, beauty, and family through such a dark time. It's time to continue spreading the love and a light that makes this school so special. When the students come to school tomorrow, you will be the first face we see. Your words, your smiles, your wisdom will stay with us for many years to come. If no one else said it, let me be the first to say thank you. Thank you to everyone that took the time to care, to love, to inspire, to make a difference. You do not go unnoticed. Thank you for not giving up during such a hard time. Thank you for not giving up on us. The pandemic came with a shock and it surprised us all. But starting today, starting now, it is time to move forward. Now is the time to seize your tomorrow today. We are one family, one Owen Tangi. Thank you. Are your parents here? Did your parents make it? Did your parents make it? Are they here? Your dad? Mr. Strauss? You here? Yeah. <laughs> Did a great job there, sir. Um, but Brian, thank you. Um, you know, this is following the, that, that, following that is the most difficult thing. I mean, I got to get up here and not 
be emotional and, you know, they did put these Kleenex just for me, but, uh, so I think in Olin Tangy, we tend to have that level of perfection that we strive to achieve and nothing's ever, doesn't matter what we do, it's just never good enough because we're striving to be pre per perfect. So, you know, Brian's reminded us that our efforts don't have to be perfect to be meaningful or great. And Lacey certainly has reminded us along with that, that when we are genuine, we are impacting Olentangy students because we are truly a family. And after hearing Lacey talk, it strikes me to remember what I frequently share with all of you. We can't accomplish our mission to facilitate maximum learning for every student unless our students know how much we care. Because kids don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And, um, and it really makes me proud that people are listening to that because you're delivering on that every day. So, you know, when I think about the last 18 months, um, you know, what comes to mind is that we've really seen the best in people, but we've also seen the worst in people. And um, sometimes it's easy to just fixate on that worst in people. And it may appear at times in my position, as my email continues to go off all throughout this ceremony, <laughs> that that is continuing to be the case. Um, you know, but I do find it important to step back and empathize and try hard to understand their perspective. I try to understand their perspective because each person, excuse me, no matter their issue, is bringing it to my attention because they care. They care about their children. And um, they care about their schools. And that is a great, that really is a great thing. So each day I try to focus on the positive. I try to focus on the best each person has to offer, no matter how they choose to offer it to me. And in doing this, I believe I can. I believe we all can overcome adversity. I believe we can overcome adversity, we can continue to support each other, and most importantly, support our students. And this really is what drives me to not ever want to give up. So, um, with that, again, I apologize for being emotional. Lacey, you got me good. <laughs> uh, so, I do want to, uh, this is something we do every year at Convocation, so every year brings new change and fresh faces, so uh, and this year's no exception. So if you're in a new role, thank you. Uh, please stand. We want to recognize you and thank you for assuming a new position. Maybe you changed to school, you got a new job. Thank you. Quite a few. Also, if you're brand new to Olentangy, who's brand new? Our brand new people? Welcome to our team. You know, I just give you the, the word of advice I give all the new people every year is lean on these people um, around you and help. they will help you learn the Olentangy way. So at this point in the program, we normally take uh, time to announce our district and teacher employee of the year. So I know all of you remember, you think there's a lot less suspense to it this year because <laughs> you're all winners. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, as you recall, last year I announced that all of you were teacher or employer of the year. Words like appreciation and gratitude and admiration all come to mind when I consider the way each of you has managed the challenges of this last school year. So once again, I uh, thank you for your dedication and your care of our students. And I want to take some time today to quickly watch a video recapping last year. Olentangy teachers and staff, last spring you made the shift from face-to-face -face teaching and service to remote school. In a matter of days, you found and developed innovative solutions to never-before-faced challenges. You designed virtual lessons with limited time and resources. You fed children who were unsure where their next meal was coming from and created a sense of community. You made sure students in need of a device got one. There was no roadmap or blueprint. It wasn't perfect, 
There were mistakes along the way, but you were there for our students and their families every single day. Fast forward to August, where despite the roadblocks and constant changes to the pandemic guidance and safety protocols, you proved we could bring students back into a classroom safely and that it was possible to build a classroom community online or part-time in person where students felt connected and engaged. You've partnered with families and helped find resources for students who were struggling. You've experimented with new approaches to special education services. You've made sure we have had plenty of trained staff and substitutes. You've continued to learn. You're crafting meaningful lessons that empower students. You're delivering PPE to buildings routinely. You're disinfecting buses between routes. You're making sure our buildings are clean and equipped and students are socially distanced and protected. Meanwhile, our work is especially challenging right now. It can feel draining when you have a barrage of emails to answer or when you have to do a video conference and face a wall of black screens. But know this, you are impacting lives. Right now, there's a student that feels known and heard because of you. There's a student that feels safe and supported because of you. There's a student who's passionate about learning because of you. There are students who will remember you forever as someone who was there for them in these tough times. You are changing the world even when you can't see it. So thank you. challenges that each of you have had to navigate and all right that's enough of that stop it <laughs> thank you <laughs> thanks for that quick trigger <laughs> you demand Vince all right so thank you again and and you know I, I just can't say it often enough I continue to be proud and humbled to work with all of you so um, more than ever I'm impressed with your perseverance and grit so I know again you've made a difference in the past and that will continue this year so so a lot of you know many of the stories um, of transformation have been shared today by our one Olentangy family my hope is that you take some of these nuggets of wisdom back to your building with you take a moment um, now to I'm gonna skip over we're, we're, we're gonna start getting pressed for time so I'm gonna press over at that though um, I'm supposed to ask you to stare at story with each other about transformation. We got it. I think we got it. Everybody's got it. We're transforming. Got it? Sorry, Vince. We're going to go ahead, though, our last activity, because I want to see all of you suffer with this activity like I did. Um, when we talk about transformation, the thing that a lot of times comes to mind is a caterpillar transforming into a butterfly. So we're going to watch a video showing us how to create an origami butterfly. And you're, once the video is over, we're going to get, um, be dismissed. I'll come back and dismiss you. But there's artwork uh, out on the tables. If you want to give it a try, all the ones we have, we're going to collect and make a giant piece of staff artwork. I will tell you ahead of time, my origami experience was an epic fail. So. I'm confident you'll all be better at it than I was. All right, Vince.
Yeah, good luck. Um, <laughs> so with that, I'm going to bring this to a conclusion. I'd like to again thank Aaron and Jen and Jenny, Brian and Lacey for sharing their stories. I want to remind you that the vendor fair is going on in the auxiliary gym. And with that, have a great year. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>